got one, one of the refiners up in uh, Mobile was good enough to give us some. This is not the same stuff that's coming to shore. This is what's called Alabama Sweet Crude, and they told us it was an API somewhere between 36 and 42. Uh, the information we've been getting is correct. What's coming to shore is somewhere API 30 to 35, somewhere in that range. So this is much thinner oil than we're going to be encountering. And so the stuff coming to shore is going to be easier to bring to this. There's still some on the beach. There's a little one right out on the water. mechanized way of doing this will shave even finer than what I'm putting here. You can notice some coarse uh, pieces of this going on. They're effective too. They just freeze the stuff a little bit slower than the powder does. But our mechanized way of doing it is going to actually have this frozen. It'll be frozen and ready to pick off before I finish putting these pellets down manually. Everybody's got a stopwatch on it. So I'll give it about no more than 60 seconds, and you should start being able to pick this right off the water. And that bucket over there, you can throw it right in that bucket because that's what we're using for our containment farm today. And when, we're, when we're attacking this on the actual shore, we'll have uh, actual open top receiving tanks that'll take this stuff, we'll just dump it in there, let it thaw out pump it out of those receiving tanks into the truck and haul it off of the refiner. Will, what's your percentage of reuse on the oil? This is uh, probably going to be on the water, we'll probably get 90-95% uh, recovery land. On the uh, land, we'll get a little sand with it, but after the settles and filtered, we'll still have the high 80-90% to 90 recovery rate on every bit of that spilled product. So it'll, it'll be able to have the fate that BP intended it to have, but we'll be the ones carrying it to the refinery after the fact with clean beach behind it. And you can just go ahead and start picking this up if you'd like with that uh, scoop. Go ahead and just scoop that on the water with that dust pan. You slide it right under there and just pick that up. Put it right in the bucket. Notice this was half, halfway on sand and halfway on water. Look at that. And notice the sand that was under it when I picked that up. The oil's coming right off with it. And I want to show you. Janet, me and you, since we're that time, we can bring our grandkids to the beach. And they can have their little tools. And they get on the, in on the act too. Just bring, watch that, watch that whole section there come up in one piece. And notice the sand underneath it when I pick it up. See how clean that is? Every bit of that oil is coming off there. Even if you have to go back with a little bit of a second run, those people we told you about that have the beach sweeping equipment, they've already told us that uh, to be able to get this stuff in solid in this form means that instead of doing like they typically have to do, of take three to six inches of beach sand with them to get the oil up, they can do the, uh, they can do the whole process with skimming maybe a quarter inch of sand to get every bit of it when we can solidify this on the surface like this. Yeah, what, about two miles, miles, like that. yeah, the beach cleaning equipment can run anywhere from two to three miles of beach an hour cleaning it. What we're hoping to do, if we get a contract to do this on the water, one of our ideas is to put our equipment right on the beach side of the buoys and let it just run, let the buoy just rub against it as it goes across. <clears throat> 
we'll have our machine on the front of the barge putting this dust uh, powder on the oil. And as the barge uh, moves through, we'll have a pickup device that's picking it up, bringing it up a conveyor, throw it in a holding tank, and just steady going, just skimming the uh, buoy right on out. What type of holding thing do you have? Something that, on wheels that's going to roll down the beach we're, or something? We're going to start every way we can. Any kind of an open top uh, holding tank, metal, fiberglass. Uh, Terry's got a friend up in Montgomery that's committed to have a bunch of fiberglass swim pools available to us, 20 by to, 40. To put that ice up on? Yeah. Actually, we'll put those on the deck of the uh, barge. We used to pick it up in, pick it up, put it in there at the hold, and if it falls, we'll just pump the oil out of that tank into a tanker truck to hold it off to the tank. No you, notice, you notice the oyster reef. I know, I know the oysters didn't get out. Uh, we can still eat the oysters. <laughs> we can eat the oysters. Yeah. <laughs> And like I said, the, what we're actually going to see when these things start getting close to landfall is much thicker oil than what we poured on here, much easier to manage. And the crystals, when they're smaller and they're really just snowflakes, they make it freeze a lot faster and, and quicker. Um, this is to want to settle on. Yeah, the, what you're seeing is these pellets. Uh, when we put the uh, mechanized part, it's going to go down there just as fine, almost as fine as the table salt. It'll go on there and freeze faster than they took me to put that on there manually. The, uh, when I did that in a five gallon bucket, after I put the fire and powder stuff on there, less than 30 seconds, I picked the entire thing up. 